every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Tuesday night here in Lagos. Thank you for joining us on Cool TV Primetime News. I'm Nifemi Okunsoye. In our top story, number of Nigeria pilgrims who died at the Mina Stampede in Saudi Arabia hit 64. Eighty-three senators passed vote of confidence on Senate President Bukola Saraki as Senate presumes plenary today. Former presidential candidate of the defunct All Nigerians People's Party of Nigeria, Gamaliel Onosode, dies at 82. Outside Nigeria, Russia considers joining the U.S. and its allies to conduct airstrikes against Islamic State targets. We'll begin tonight in Abuja, where President Mohamed Buhari is seeking approval of the House of Representatives for another tranche of $200 million World Bank loan for Lagos State. The request was conveyed in a letter uh, read by Speaker Yakubu Dogara to members on the floor soon after the resume from a six-week recess. The president also sought legislative approval to raise Nigeria's proposed diaspora bond to $300 million. Of 2015 to 2017, I seek your support to facilitate the consideration and early approval of the Development Policy Operation 2 loan of USD 200 million to enable the state to consolidate on the gains of the second tranche of the operational DPO2. It is instructive to note that key program objectives of the DPO are already beginning to show in terms of increased inflows of private investment to the state, increased private sector employment opportunities, and increased internally generated revenues. I hope members will treat the requests in their usual expeditious manner. Please accept the assurances of my personal warm regards. Yours sincerely, President Muhammad Buhari. 83 senators today passed a vote of confidence on the president of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, and other principal officers in the aftermath of his current travels at the Court of Conduct Tribunal. The move followed a motion raised by David Umaru, representing Niger East, when the federal lawmakers resumed from a six-week long recess. But one of the senators on the regional list openly dissociated himself from the motion because it wasn't consulted while another caused a stare in the timbers. Basia Ye now reports. The motion, which came as a matter of urgent public importance, was the second of the day. Senator David Umaru, representing Niger what? East, sponsored the motion that was designed to show that the Senate president has the backing of the majority in the chamber. The need for this motion cannot be overemphasized in view of what we have even witnessed this morning. We are ready to work, the leadership and this Senate must perform its constitutional duties and responsibilities 
without fear or favor, and without intimidation. Uh, it is in this light that we are bringing much this motion so that we can reaffirm our commitment to our responsibilities and uh, to affirm our independence as the Constitution has provided. We have elected our leaders for the next four years. If anybody is dreaming, if anybody is dreaming outside this number, that is an influence, an action that will align this number to go as it. But a senator representing Oshun senator East, Omo Babajide Omowurara, was quick to dissociate himself from the original 84 BDS that co-sponsored the motion. Coincidentally, he is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Rules and Business. Under, my name has been listed on this motion as number 11, Senator Jide Omowurara. Ordinarily, I would have known as the chairman of the Committee on Rules and Business by virtue of Order 97 Rule 2. But since it came under a matter of urgent public importance, under Order 42 and I believe Order 52, I wouldn't know, and I don't know, and I don't know that my name is on it. I wish to move, Mr. President, sir, that my name is Top. Then there was drama as Kabiru Marafa made an unsuccessful bid to have a say on the issue. His discontent was not only directed at the Senate's president, but also to some of his colleagues until he was led out of the chamber. The Senator Marafa, distinguished Senator Marafa, you have to read, you have to go by the book. Read, you read 3-5. I've listened to you. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. Let read, me read it first. Read 3-5. Okay, sir. And 3-8. Then I read 3-6. Motion. Order 53 three five. five. Yes, 35, sir. It said, reference shall not be made to any matter on which a judicial decision is pending in such a way as might, in the opinion of the President of the Senate, prejudice the interest of the parties concerned. Mr. President, now, Mr. Bush Wallet, read, we are in court challenging the Constitution. We are in court challenging the Constitution. Read 53-6. Feel your refusal to read 53-6. I have no other attendant than to rule you no, out of order. With due respect, sir, you have not heard me. You have not heard Leader me. This is tyranny. Yes, this is tyranny. I am not heard. I am not heard. Yes, I call you a point of order. I will not allow to speak. And you want to leave me, Mr. President? After the dramatic scene, the Senate spokesman had this to say. This action contravenes three sections of section 56 of the standing rules of the Senate. It's disgraceful, it's unacceptable, it's condemnable, and the Senate regrets that. This is the second time in three months that senators will be passing a vote of confidence on Saraki's leadership. Basia Ye, Core TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, two different pro Saraki groups on Tuesday showed up at the entrance of the National Assembly in a show of solidarity for the leadership of the Senate under Bukola Saraki. One of the groups, Ohanese Indigo Youth Movement, stated that the rally was part of activities to mark this year's Eagle Day celebrations, while also identifying with Deputy Senate President E.K. Kuramadu. The other group is the Coalition of Civil Society and Media Executives for Policy and Stability. Still with the Senate, of course, the House now says it will not be business as, as usual when the screening of President Muhammadu Buhari's potential ministers begin. Senate spokesman Dino Belaye disclosed this while briefing journalists after plenary. He explained that each individual will be subjected to thorough scrutiny before confirmation. 
We'll bring you details of that story later on. Deputy Senate President Ike Kuramadu says there are ongoing moves to publish false and defamatory information about him. This, according to a special advisor, Uche Anichiku, is with a view to running him out of office or forcing him to, re to resign as the deputy president of the Senate. He explained in a statement that the move includes scavenging through Senate accounts and committees he has ever served on for information about him. The deputy president of the Senate argued that the effort is being spearheaded by the same people who had recently put up a staunch defense of bipartisan leadership in the legislature, which they said was consistent with the Constitution. He added that the move would fail just like the alleged forgery of Senate standing rules did. And as the trial of the Senate president continues, the matters continue now to generate intense reaction from prominent citizens in the country. The latest to Add his voice to the developing story is this Fanas Wansat, a former speaker and a sitting member of the Plateau State House of Assembly. He spoke with our correspondent in the support. While some are of the opinion that the Senate President Bukola Saraki should step down from his position, others are crying foul that the entire process of the Code of Conduct Bureau has been flawed. The lawmaker argued that if corruption is to be fought squarely in the country, it should be holistic and that the crusade should not be a means of settling political dispute. He stated that the entire trial is not being done in good faith, adding that Saraki should not contemplate resignation at all. I will advise Saraki to fight on. I will never advise Saraki to resign, because if the allegations or what he is going through is in good faith, Saraki should resign. But I can assure you, what Saraki is going through, his persecutors, or those that raise those allegations against him, even if the allegations are true, the allegations are not raised in good faith. The lawmaker who called on President Buhari to treat carefully in his crusade argued that those who assisted him to power are men and women of questionable conduct. Therefore, it cannot be said to be free of corruption. The lawmaker, who was speaker during the 6th Assembly in the state, said docking a sitting Senate president for what seems to be a targeted query is a bad omen for the country. In the interest of this country, when I saw Saraki in the dock, tears rolled out, rolled down from my eyes because I knew we are running into serious problems in this country. Surprise. We are running into serious problems in this country. Yes, Buhari is fighting corruption. Perfect. That is good. He is a product of corrupt people. Yeah. Who amongst those people that stood for Buhari to a match, first and foremost, as a candidate of APC, then secondly as the president of Nigeria, who amongst them is not corrupt? Owasat vows to use the resources at his disposal to stand by the embattled Senate president until found not guilty because the entire process and those behind the prosecution have not come to equity with clean hands. So what are we talking about? Some, the other day they were saying between 1999 and date, uh, till date, over 18,000 assets have been declared. It is now that Saraki's declaration is the major issue. Not in good faith. And because of that, wallahi, I will stand with Saraki and all the way, all the way, he must fight on. Let's see where this thing will take us to. As the nation awaits October 21 for the continuation of the Senate President's trial at the Court of Conduct Tribunal, it's expected that justice will be duly served. The Senate has set up a committee to determine the actual number of Nigerians who died in the Hajj stampede in Mina, Saudi Arabia. The committee is also to work out the means of redress for the affected families. Senate President Bukola Saraki discussed these in his welcome address to his colleagues after a six-week recess. All the Nigerian programs who suffer physical injuries 
As a result of these two incidents, are given adequate medical treatment. To constitute an ad hoc committee to investigate the cause of these two incidents with a view to establish the true causes, identify the number of Nigerians that were affected, and establish the remedies for redress open to those affected, either individually or severally. Meanwhile, the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, today said 10 more corpses of deceased Nigerian pilgrims have been identified, bringing the number of Nigerian pilgrims who died at Mina Stampede to 64. Given newsman update on the incident in Mecca, Alaji Ubamana, the Director of Public Affairs of the Commission, said 244 pilgrims had been declared missing. Mana said 71 pilgrims were injured as against the 61 pilgrims earlier announced by the Commission. He said of the 64 deceased Nigerian pilgrims, 46 were transported to Saudi Arabia by state pilgrims welfare agencies and 18 by private tour operators. Mana also said that 12 of the 71 injured pilgrims were transported to Saudi Arabia by tour operators and 59 by state pilgrims welfare agencies. He said the deceased were from Adamawa, Bauchi, Boronu, Ekiti, Jigawa, FCT, Cross Rivers, Gombe and Kano. Others are from Kasina, Kebi, Kaduna, Kwara, Nasarawa, Niger, Omo, Ondo State, Plateau, Rivers, Sokoto, Yobe, Taraba, and Zamfara. You recall that more than 70, 749 pilgrims were reported to have died and 805 others injured during Thursday's stampede on the way to the Jamrat complex in Mina. Saudi Arabia. African Force Ladies are in New York to discuss the effective means of contributing to the Sustainable Development Goals. The women who met under the umbrella of Organization of African Force Ladies are considering ways of reducing the prevalence rate of HIV AIDS on the continent. It also provided an opportunity for wife of Nigeria's President Aisha Buhari to draw attention to the negative impact of the current insurgency on several women and children who now have to live in internally displaced persons camps. She was represented by the wife of the Senate President, Toyin Saraki. We'll take a break now, and I'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or what talk crazy? Or what talk of crazy is that? Except crazy. News making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry Criminals, Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Excuse me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our military to this report. I said, well, help On me. On Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody have your right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're on to Core TV Prime Tab News, a recap of our top stars. Number of Nigeria pilgrims who died in a stampede in Saudi Arabia meet 64. Eighty-three senators pass vote of confidence on Senate President Bukola Saraki as Senate resumes plenary today. Former presidential candidate of the defunct of Nigeria's People's Party, Gabaliel Onosade, dies at 82. You can get all of our top stories on any of the social media platforms on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Courtivan News. Our Twitter handle is at Courtivan News NG and we'll stream a live on YouTube. It's youtube.com forward slash Courtivan for the space at news. Over the now, we'll see the society group New Nigeria Agenda has thrown its weight behind the anti corruption crusade of President Mohammed Buhari. They also want President Buhari to extend the anti graft war to other sectors of the economy. 
The group argues that if this was done, Nigeria will not only be free of corruption, but will allow will also be firmly on the path of social economic development. The civil rights body made its position known at a press conference in Abuja. By resources, we, we mean not just public funds, but also public institutions and constituted authorities. Since the inauguration of the 8th Assembly, of the, the, the 8th National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we have witnessed the continued process of seeming influ influence of certain individuals through by virtue of their close association to power to try and manipulate the freedom to choose as enshrined in our constitution but rather dictate their wishes and personal gains and personal agendas using the instruments of government. Of what you mentioned, it is the recent travails of the Senate President, Senator Bukola Saraki, who was charged with false, asset, with false declaration of assets. Nigerians have watched in disbelief where a judge accused of corruption is issuing a bench warrant of arrest for another accused, even when his counsel representing him assured the tribunal, the tribunal chairman, that he will, he will present his client in court. Gamaliel Onosade, technocrat and a former presidential candidate of the defunct All Nigeria's People's Party, is dead. Onosade, who hailed from Delta State in Nigeria, passed on in the early hours of the day at the age of 82. During his lifetime, he chaired several private and public sector businesses and initiatives, including Dunlop Nigeria PLC, Cadbury Nigeria PLC, the Presidential Commission and Power Statels in 1981, and has been in the forefront of Niger Delta Environmental Survey since 1995. A report which was later tagged the Day Report, an outgrowth of his role as the chairman of the commission to review Nigerian power startups, was the first in the nation to tackle comprehensively the industrialization drive in capital spending, which dominated the oil boom of the 1970s and the early 1980s. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Akiwumi Ambade has expressed sadness over the death of former technocrat and industrialist Gamaliel Onosade. The Independent National Electoral Commission has closed its case at the River State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja after calling 16 witnesses at the resumed sitting, INA Council Oyekachi Ikpiazo informed the tribunal that the commission was satisfied with the evidence of the witnesses. Ipiasu also told the tribunal that INEC would not call any more witnesses while applying to close the case. The application was not opposed by the petitioner's counsel, Akinyo Lujimi, tribunal chairman. Meanwhile, uh, Justice Suleiman Ambrosali consequently adjourned hearing to September 30 to enable Gabna Iyesu Wiki open his defense. He naked to stay the elections petition tribunal sitting in Adoekiti has dismissed the case filed by the candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the Ekiti South Senatorial District Tony Adeneyi for lack of merit. The judgment affirms the victory of the Deputy Minority Chief Whip of the Senate, Abiodo Olujimi, as winner of the March 28th senatorial election. Correspondent Rashid Rashid has details in the support. With the presence of heavy security personnel at the court premises, this displays the importance of the task ahead. Tony Adeniyi, the All Progressives Congress candidate at the Ikiti South senatorial election, has challenged the victory of Abiodo Olujimi of the PDP. He prayed the court to declare him the winner of the election order a rerun hinging on the allegation that Olujimi did not resign at the Nigerian Communications Commission 30 days before the election date. But in a unanimous judgment delivered by Justice Patricia Obayi on behalf of the chairman, the tribunal dismissed the petition saying it lacks merit. NCC is established by law. So our view is that um, it is applicable. She must resign. But the tribunal in their wisdom, three wise men, they have done their bit, and they construed it to mean that um, she is not a public servant. The judgment was uh, 
a scholarly one. It was apt, and the judges actually went into deep research. Tony Adini, however, vows to appeal the judgment. We are just heading for the court of appeal, I can assure you. All I pray is that the necessary papers should be made available to us so that we have done, we have gone through this type of process. So I'm not deterred as a client and I'm not deterred as a lawyer to pursue my right to the apex court. They can go to appeal, they can go to Supreme Court, the truth, the truth will be constant. While the tribunal decides on this, Tension is, however, high as the judgment regarding the elections of Ikki's Central Senatorial District is being awaited. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoikiti. The issues raised as a result of the Lawrence Stoning saga may not be resting soon. This is coming as the PDP in the state now accuses the state government of a arrest arrest and intolerance of the opposition. Rashid Rashid also has details in this report. In an apparent bid to fight back and wash itself off the eight-day stoning saga, the People's Democratic Party in Kwara State has asked the state government to stop blaming the opposition party for the stoning of the APC hierarchies, saying the annoyance of the people is as a result of the anti-people policy of the APC-led government. Shortly after the unfortunate incidents of disruption of the eat prayer at the praying ground on the Saladin, the APC Kuala State could not point any accusing fingers on the untold sovereigns and they asked their policy of non-payment of workers' entitlement could cause them. That caused the, pro the governor also towing his party line, only saw the opposition as the only group that caused the problem for them on that day. The governor later, in a well-circulated press statement, accused only members of the opposition for the problems of his government. While condemning the attack, the PDP accused the state government of using the stolen saga to haul its members into detention and for the threat on the party's top echelon. Any attempt to kill, arrest or even illegally disturb our lawful activities will amount to intolerance of the opposition, which is antithetical to the workings and the practice of democratic governance. Democracy should be an open field of cross-fertilization of ideas, not a field of violence and blood -batting. Government has the highest duty to protect lives and properties and not create fear through sponsorship of violence and threat of violence. But to the state government, the allegation is not only false, but baseless. Uh, but basically, uh, well, uh, it is, the allegation is false, uh, it is malicious, uh, it is preferous, and also it's contemptuous and provocative. Uh, it's provocative because uh, everybody knows what happened at the prayer, you know, prayer ground, and every right-thinking Nigerians have condemned, you know, everybody has condemned the, you know what the uh, 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 the area boys did, or you know what you can call uh, the, you know people call the good boys. What they have done is condemnable. It's as it's against religion, our religion. It's against our culture. It's against God. Uh, anybody who has not done that, then it has his own headache. The police has been called upon by the PDP for protection as the state government asked the security agency to subject the suspected hoodlums to thorough investigation. The last, however, may be fine sight. What's up? The Federation of Public Service Game 2015 has finally been unveiled at the Imo State Government House. Governor Rocha Zokorocha, who was represented by his deputy, Eze Madumere, performs the unveiling exercise in this capacity. Ajibada Wolfesser has details in the report. According to the state government, the massive turnout by public servants showed greatly how the state embraced the idea of hosting the Federation Games. While all cadres of civil servants made themselves available, Organizers of the event reveal the 2015 game will feature all forms of sports activities. Deputy Governor of Imo State, Eze Madumere, while addressing the audience, spoke on the significance of the event. Well,
body and soul, properly exercised and prepared by the task of building a bureaucracy that will be strong enough to provide for the nation a sustainable means of building a vegetable society. May I at this juncture urge all participants to maximize the benefit of the aim and use the opportunity to create a strong and formidable public service for the nation. Done with a speech, the Deputy Governor unveils the EMO 2015 phase of Federation of Public Service Game. And when the idea was moved to me, that was the sentence I had in my mind. I started to ask questions and ask my colleagues across the And they briefed me to me on that. The last edition of that state was very, and I don't lose it. And it involved over 120 every day for my hospitalization. While many count down to the day, some are already expressing optimism with the way residents of Imo people and its government embrace the idea. The police have denied knowledge of payment of ransom before former secretary to the government of the Federation of Lufalai was released by his abductors. Inspector General of Police, Elimina Rasi, made this known in a statement emphasized that the testimony of the elder statesman that he paid a ransom for his release was a demotivating news. He, however, said in a statement issued on his behalf that the police would investigate the claims. IGRC noted that as a law enforcement agency guided by the rule of law and professional ethics, the police would not in any circumstance encourage the payment of ransom to kidnappers. According to him, the act is tantamount to rewarding crime and motivating other criminals to follow that path. The IGP insisted that massive deployment of policemen on search and rescue operations put pressure on the kidnappers to release the elder statesmen. He also assured Nigerians that the police will widen its investigative scope with a view to exploring how the payment was made and to whom it was made. Arasi expressed belief that if payments was perfected through bank transactions, that will also enable the police to trace the cash and apprehend the perpetrators. The Inspector General of Police was speaking in reaction to the confession made by the former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Chief Olufalai, that his family members paid some ransom to gain freedom from his abductors. As Nigeria prepared to celebrate a 55th anniversary on October the 1st, there are expectations on what should be done in this part of the world in making it truly an African giant. A non-governmental organization is putting something together. Our correspondent, Nato Levare, has details in this report. Child sex abuse or child molestation is a form of child abuse in which an adult or older adolescent uses a child for sexual stimulation. This can occur in a variety of settings including home, school or work. The global prevalence of child sex abuse has been estimated at 19.7% for females and 7.9% for males. Against this backdrop, a non-government organization organized a forum focused on society negligence and abandonment to the theme, Our Present World, Which Way Out. The convener, Linda Oluwale of Remsters, Nigeria, marks the 55th anniversary. Security of lives and property coupled with constant electricity is what Nigeria deserves. We want to have security. We want our electricity to be consistent. We want our educational sector, we want our government to look into it. They have been raped. Some of them have been killed. A lot of people are taking advantage of them just because they want to move from college, from secondary school to college. We should not give up on this nation. I believe that if you do your part, and I do my part, the Nigeria of our dream will actually see it. We will not, will not just see it. We'll all experience it. All the participants also relate to the much expected change promised by President Muhammad Buhari. I expect a whole lot from President Muhammad Buhari. First of all, corruption should be eradicated as he, as he is trying to do. Then our infrastructures, look at our roads, they are really bad. Our educational system should also be improved on. 
So many things in this country need to be developed. Governments can um, provide employment for the youth of nowadays because they are, most of them have been abandoned when they finish their school. And also they should um, they provide advice for parents because most of them abandon their children at home. They do things they don't like and they should also enforce laws against courtism and um, corruption. Um, my expectation is the change as they propose in their mantra while they were campaigning, the APC-led government, they said they are going to change Nigeria. And I'm really expecting this change. As I'm a student, I'm still a student, and I can see the situation of education in Nigeria. It is nothing to write home about. I'm appalled because of some children who are out of school in this country, which is not supposed to be so. So I want this to be put an end in this country. According to reports, most sexual abuse offenders are acquainted with their victims. Approximately 30 percent are relatives of the child, most often brothers, fathers, uncles or cousins. Around 60 percent of all their acquaintances in this gathering are soliciting for a more comprehensive fight against sex abuse against children in Nigeria. We'll take another break now. I'll be back with business, sports and stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water and New TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said oh, and because people are watching you. You know, another election is coming. Because some people were strong for the balance. We will be strong, man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. On business tonight, Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says the federal government is determined to solve the problem of power in the country within the shortest possible time. Professor Shibajo, while speaking with newsmen today at Air Day in Oshun State, noted that a significant progress has already been witnessed in the sector. What you can see is incremental progress in the power sector. I'm sure that many people notice that there is progress and it's incremental. And we're looking at it in phases. We expect that by the end of the year, we should be doing about 5,000 megahertz of power. In the first quarter of next year, we should increase by hopefully another 1,000 megahertz of power. We have problems in transmission and distribution, but we're working on that. All of it is going to be incremental, but we're working at it day by day. I've always believed in merit and capacity. That should be the rule. And everywhere else in the world, the rule is first merit and then any other form of quota. That should be the rule. So you should have a higher number of people appointed to positions on merit, and then we have considerations of geographical spread and federal character. Nigeria's gas production has declined by 5.56% to 237.40 billion standard cubic feet of gas in the month of June this year. The country fled about 17.15% of the total gas production during the month under review. Let us Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation uh, NNPC monthly report released recently disclosed that the total natural gas liquid produced for the month of June 2015 
was 95,407 to 1.0 metric tons. It said that out of the total gas produced, Mobile had about 48,490 metric tons and NNPC 46,710 metric tons, while a total of 76,008 metric tons was lifted for the month. The federal government has been dragged to uh, before a federal high court in Abuja over the appointment of the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FRS, and the managing director of the asset management company of Nigeria, Amcon, by President Mohamed Buhari. The plaintiff, a lawyer, Madukulam Igwe, in the suit on Monday, argued that the appointments of the two chief executive officers of both government agencies did not pass through the screening and confirmation of the Senate and therefore are unlawful. Igwe listed that the defendants in the matter to include the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Attorney General of the Federation. Others of the Chairman of FRS, Babatande William Fowler, Managing Director of AMCOM, Ahmed Lawan Kuro, and three other Executive Directors, naming Lola Yeye, Everochuku Uneze, and Aminu Ismaila. He also asked the court to declare that the newly appointed CEOs cannot exercise the functions and duties of their respective offices without the confirmation of the appointment by the Senate. Outside Nigeria now, Russia is considering whether to follow the U.S. and its allies in conducting airstrikes against Islamic State targets. President Vladimir Putin says after meeting Barack Obama on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly. But the meeting and, of course, the leader speeches of the General Assembly also highlighted differences about how to end the Syrian war. Russia said it will be an enormous mistake not to work with Syria's President Bashar al-Assad to tackle IS. On Monday, the U.S. and France again insisted that President Assad must go. But in response, President Putin said they are not citizens of Syria and so should not be involved in choosing the leadership of another country. U.S. launches airstrikes on Tuesday as fears arise that control of city would give Taliban a strategic base of oppression. Afghanistan has mobilized military reinforcement for a counteroffensive to take back Kunduz a day after Taliban fighters overran the strategic northern city, the biggest victory since being toppled from power in 2001. U.S. President Barack Obama has announced that more than 50 countries have pledged tens of thousands of new personnel to bolster the U.N.'s overstretched and under-equipped personnel and peacekeeping operations. Obama said that about 40,000 new troops and police have been committed to the U.N.'s Blue Helmet operations, which increasingly face hardened armed groups, shortages of hardware, and have been rocked by sex abuse scandals. And out of sports. Olympiacos of Athens are in London for a match day two of this season's UEFA Champions League tie with Asna in which the massive underdogs. They come with a striker who has played in the Premier League, Nigeria's African 23 winner and former West, West Brom Albion record signing Brown Adair. Adair, though admitting they are underdogs, thinks it's football and anything is possible. Romelu Lukaku scored twice as he led a superb comeback in the stab round from 2-0 down to win West Brom. The Baggies took the lead before the break when Sadio Brajo finished well before Craig Dawson doubled the league in the 54th minute with a header. A minute later, Lukaku rose to nodding Gerard delivers cross and then set up Aaron Ocon who fired in to level. Reading champions Barcelona face Bayern Leverkusen without the injured Lionel Messi while Jose Mario goes back to his old club Porto for Chelsea in the Champions League. Today Barcelona thrilling from the blow of losing uh, Lionel Messi for up to eight weeks with new ligament damage as they prepare to welcome Leverkusen to the Camp Nou. To hand Core TV primetime news tonight, a recap of our top stars.
number of Nigeria pilgrims who died at being a stampede in Saudi Arabia beats 6 to 4. Eighty-three senators pass a vote of confidence on Senate President Bola Saraki as Senate resumes plenary today. Former presidential candidate of the defunct All Nigeria's People's Party, Yamani Yanon Nasali, dies today at 82. That's it on the news. On behalf of everyone here, I am Nifek Soye. You have a pleasant night rest. Good night.